In this tutorial, we're going to walk through how binary search actually works. And before we get into that, we need something to compare it to. And so what we're going to compare it to is something called linear search. Uh, on the page right now, we have a standard array, and it's an array of integers going from 1 to 25. The order doesn't matter at all because all we're concerned with right now is searching for an item. So uh, let's do a sample search. The first thing we're going to search for is 15. And we're going to see how many times we have to iterate through the array, which means to go through each element in the array before we get to 15. So we start out at the zero element, which actually has uh, one as a value. And so we'd go one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'd actually have six things that we have to go through in order to get to that 15th value. Now, what if we want to go to 25? In this case, we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And what if there was nothing, the element that we we're looking for wasn't even in the array? So say we had 99. It would be what we call n. It would be every single, and you know, which is similar to 25, except uh, in this case it's considered the worst case time complexity because the element isn't even in the array, which means we would go through the entire array without finding the element and then returning that we couldn't find it. So uh, this is not a good way to search because right here we only have 11 elements. What would happen if we had a thousand elements or a million elements or 10 million elements? Uh, if you think about when you're using Google, it's not going through every single site on the web to find what you're looking for. It has an algorithm that makes it a much much more efficient. And what we're going to look at is not exactly what Google uses, but we're going to look at a way to make searching a lot more efficient than this. Uh, if you're taking this for an algorithm class, uh, you'd want to know the worst case time complexity is going to be big O of n uh, for uh, linear search through an array like this. And if you're not taking it for al algorithm class and you don't know what that's talking about, don't worry, it's just called big O notation. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go 15... 25, and 99. Okay, now to know how search works on a binary search tree, you, it's very important to know the structure. So if you've not watched the, my previous video on showing how to set up a binary search tree, you may want to go watch it. If not, just you can follow along and it, it is pretty intuitive and easy to pick up. So we're going to first do our very uh, first search, which is 15. In this case, 15 is the root node, which means that our, uh, this only took one iteration. We only had to search through one item. We found it, and then we returned it. That's not always going to be the case. In fact, it's very rarely going to be the case that the item you're looking for is actually at the root, but when it is, that's what it's going to return. Now, let's look at what it would be if it was 25. If you remember, last time it took us 11 steps to get to 25. Here, let's see how many steps it's going to be. So we start out at 15, that's 1, then we realize that 25 is bigger than 15, so we go to the right hand side. So here we see, okay, we compare is 25 bigger or smaller than 20. We know it's bigger, so we look it to the right node again. So, so far, this is we've taken two steps. Now we're at 22. Once again, we compare, is 25 bigger than 22, or is it less than it? We know it's bigger, and we arrive at 25. That took us a total of one, two, three, three steps until we got to it. And if you want to include that last one, you could say it took four steps to get to it. 
99 would actually be the same number. It, it would only take us four steps because we would go from 15 to 20, 22, 25. We'd realize that 25 is the leaf, and there is nothing greater than 25, and the system would return that, 20, that 99 was not in the uh, binary tree. So if you can see right there and compare these two, this is dramatically faster than uh, than having to go linearly and go through every single item. It's very rare that you would actually find something using a linear search faster than uh, using a binary search tree, um, mainly because uh, it's very rare you'll find your element on you know the second or third. Um, second or third iteration, but the way to think about this, this is what really helped me understand this at least, was being able to uh, think of opening up a phone book. And when you have a phone book, say that you start and you're using the white pages, for example, and it's sorted by last name, and you have somebody that star last name you're uh, looking for starts with an M. You're going to open it up somewhere in the middle. It doesn't matter where you look it up. And then from there, you're going to compare M, or, or you're going to compare whatever page you opened up. So let's say you opened it up, and you opened it up at the letter D. And you know that you need to get to M. So you have a goal of getting to M. Now, you look at D, you see that is D less than or greater than M. We know it's less than M alphabetically. So what do we do? That means that we would go to the right and we would open that up again. And then we would keep on doing this over and over again until we find M. And so it's a very similar thing with the binary search tree. You take the number you're trying to find, you go through every uh, different stage, every different level of the tree, and you look either to the right or to the left, and then you make your decision based off that. So uh, just to practice it one more time, this time we'll look for the number 21. So we start at 15 is 21 less than or greater than 15. It's greater. Then we go to 20. Now at 20, we do the same thing. The comparison says that 21 is greater, so we go down again, and we have 22 there. With 22, we, we compare it. 21 is less than 22, and we find it. And it only took us four steps, which is incredibly fast. Now, the average time complexity is big O of log base 2 of n. And so this is extremely fast. If you're familiar with the principles of logarithms, uh, logarithms are kind of like exponents except backwards. So um, if the other uh, search was, uh, was n, log n means it's dramatically faster. That's on the average case, which is very important to know. This is an average case. What makes something an average case when it comes to a binary search tree uh, has a lot to do with how balanced the tree is. So that is something to remember. You want to have your binary search trees balanced. Very important. The key to this is something I'm going to show you. Uh, a binary search tree can actually equal the same complexity as a regular linear search. And do you know how that can happen? It's actually relatively intuitive. Here you can see our nodes. You have the root, and you can see this tree is actually completely symmetrical. It's very rare to have it exactly like this, but it's nice when it is because it makes searching through it incredibly fast. Now, on this page, you will see this is a horribly uh, uh, balanced tree. Uh, there 
essentially is no tree. And you will run into cases where this happens. And so what you're going to have to deal with here when it comes to searching, you're going to have a complexity of big O of n, which is actually identical to searching using a linear search method. And the reason for that is this is actually the root node. I know it doesn't even look like a tree, so it's hard to see. However, this is the root. So if we have a number, we can simply, like say the number is 1, we actually have to go through each element and it's the last element in the search tree that has that total. So uh, this makes it uh, searching really kind of pointless or using this kind of data structure pointless if this is what your tree looks like. Uh, it works out much better if you have a well-balanced tree and there's some tutorials I'm uh, going to create that will talk about how you can balance your tree out if you happen to have something that looks like this. Um, but this is uh, this is where you usually can have a way that you can randomize and balance out your tree so that you can get back to those log n type of uh, search um, complexities. But it is important to know that uh, the worst case performance of a binary search tree can be as bad as big O of n. So it's important to just always kind of keep that in the back of your mind. But uh, that's a tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions on this whatsoever. And after this, we're going to start learning how to insert and delete nodes off of a, uh, a binary search tree.